is up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 chevy blazer courtesy of apple chevrolet in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so today we're in this one because i personally love the design of the blazer and it is competing in a very popular segment competing against other vehicles like the ford edge the honda crv and the toyota rav4 as well so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 blazer first one being the 2lt starting at 36,795 then there's the 3lt and the one that we are in today starting at 40,695 rs for 44,195 and lastly the premier going for 44,195 as well and so all of those prices were pricing for the front wheel drive variant if you wanted to add all wheel drive you can do that simply add 2700 dollars then to any of those prices so as you can imagine with all of these trim levels there actually are a couple different engine configurations for the blazer as well so the first one is going to belong to the 2lt 3lt and premier trim levels that one is powered by a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 228 horsepower at 5,000 rpm 258 pound feet of torque coming in at 1500 rpm that power being sent to front wheels or all wheels through a nine speed automatic zero to 60 time coming in at impressive 6.3 seconds there with mpg numbers coming in at 22 in the city 29 on the highway and so then there is the other engine configuration that comes standard on the rs but is still available on the other trim level so we actually do have this other engine configuration as an option for our 3lt this one is a 3.6 liter naturally aspirated v6 putting out 308 horsepower at 6700 rpm 270 pound feet of torque coming in at 5000 rpm power being sent to front wheels or all wheels through a nine speed automatic zero to 60 times slightly quicker coming in at six seconds flat with mpg numbers coming in at 19 in the city 27 then on the highway but so that before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our blazer i did want to mention to you guys the drive mode so there is a circular dial located directly behind the shifter if you were to turn that that will give you options like tour sport snow and ice tow and haul and also an off-road mode adjusting things like the shift points of throttle response steering sensitivity and the all-wheel drive system engagement as well so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our naturally aspirated v6 here up to speed all right you guys found our straightaway a bit of an uphill climb but that's okay the blazer can handle it in three two one go nice <laughs> i'm so thankful for no turbo lag on this that is so nice <laughs> that is plenty quick this thing is dang quick man that was fun yeah, I've been reviewing so many turbocharged engines lately, and I know there is a turbocharged engine available for the Blazer, but I am glad that we have the naturally aspirated V6, because I'm sure with the turbocharged four-cylinder, there's probably going to be a little bit of turbo lag there, and it's not going to be as reliable as a naturally aspirated V6 like we have today as well. So we got the reliability, we got the incredible power, and yes, there is incredible power here in the Blazer. Definitely going to put a smile on your face, so nothing wrong with that acceleration whatsoever. But anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12.4 inch solid rear discs as far as that uh braking feel goes as we are pulling up to a stop sign let me just go ahead and hit the brakes it's great it's perfectly fine it's not a super firm braking feel but it's definitely not a soft braking feel either so honestly it is quite perfect for the blazer in my personal opinion then touching on suspension and handling, you will find a fully independent front and rear suspension coming standard, of course. But I did want to also mention for that RS trim level specifically, there's going to be specific suspension tuning and steering feel tuning as well for that specific trim level, since it's more of a sportier kind of trim level for the Blazer. So I did want to mention that. But as far as ride quality goes, it's been okay. Nothing wrong with the ride quality. You do tend to feel a little bit more of the road than uh, some of the BMWs I just got done driving, but that makes sense. But yeah, definitely don't have any issues there. As far as steering feel goes, that is one thing I absolutely love about the Blazer. It's definitely a heavy steering feel, instantly points you in the direction that you wanna go, but that's kind of on point for what the Blazer is. This is kind of a sportier family SUV, and it kind of lives up to that with that acceleration, but also the steering feel that I'm experiencing right now as well. So 
absolutely no issues there. As far as cabin noise goes, as we're going like 10 miles per hour, it's been perfectly fine. But honestly, I haven't had much wind noise or even road noise coming into the cabin, even when I was driving at highway speed. So that as well is perfectly fine. And touching on visibility, besides the rear view mirror being a little bit smaller than I'm used to, I can see perfectly fine out the back. So definitely not gonna have any issues there either. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2020 for Chevy Blazer. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Chevy Blazer finished in black. Yes, Chevy got creative with the exterior color name for sure. But speaking of exterior color names, there is one new exterior color for the 2024 Blazer that is gonna be Riptide Blue Metallic. So if you wanted the latest and greatest, that is the color to look for. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the Blazer is made. Take a look at the VIN. First character is the number three, indicating that the new Blazer is actually built and assembled in Mexico, down south. Anyways, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. LED headlights with LED daytime running lights do come standard across the board. Active grille shutters actually do come standard as well, meaning if you take a look at that front grille, it is gonna open and close dependent upon the engine cooling that is needed at any given time, something that BMW has done for quite a while as well. So I do like that. Chrome grille accents for the 2LT and 3LT trim levels. Gray or black grille accents with RS lettering, of course, for the RS trim level. And there are plenty of options to make that grille Grill completely blacked out with the black bow tie logo like we have today so keep that in mind there's a ton of options for this thing and then there is a full chrome front grill for the premier trim level if you wanted that but that pretty much rounds out the front end i think the front end looks absolutely amazing on the blazer but let me know what you think in the comments below but let's now go ahead and make our way to the side so now since we are around to the side of this one roof rails do come standard on the 3lt trim level and up so i like that the crossbars that we got up top there that is going to be optional of course but they are there as well but rear privacy glass does come standard you got the floating roof line towards the back although you really can't tell with the black exterior but essentially it's just that line that separates the roof from the rest of the body of the vehicle. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated for all trim levels across the board and you will get LED integrated turn signals for the three LT trim level and up. There's added graphics on the front fender there. Once again, they are optional in case you were curious. But also on the front doors in typical Chevy fashion, you will find some blazer lettering. That is something Chevy does really with all of their vehicles. I've always liked that. Then take a look down at the wheel setup, 18 inch metallic aluminum alloys for the 2LT and 3LT trim levels. And then 20 inch gray aluminum alloys for the RS and 20 inch machine faced aluminum wheels for the premium. But I do love these wheels that we have on this one today. Completely blacked out this blazer. It looks good. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, and so we're now making our way to the back of this one, all the way to the top body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that, rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that, rear window wiper. You do have LED taillights that come standard on every single trim level across the board. Let me get a little closer because there's a cool design to it. There's like this swoopy kind of design, and you do have the bow tie logo found within the taillights as well, so I thought that was pretty cool. But that swoopy design, it's like a little wave within the taillight. I think that's dang cool, but anyways. Also like the video and subscribe lettering. It's all blacked out. You guys can't really see it that well, but it's there. So anyways, I'm just kidding, of course, but I have been doing this for nine years. So if you do like car reviews, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because that is what we do here. But then just below it all, you will find dual exhaust outlets with bright tips. I love that they didn't hide the exhaust like so many manufacturers are doing these days. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is gonna be a hands-free power tailgate for the RS and Premier trim levels. However, it is still a power tailgate for the 3LT trim level that we have today. So that was definitely super convenient. There is a button on the key fob, there's a button on the tailgate itself then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 30.5 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 64.2 cubic feet. But there was a lot going on back there, including very, very bright LED cargo lighting, which isn't always the case. So wanted to emphasize that. There is a 12 volt power outlet back there. There's some tie down anchors, there's grocery bags 
DJI hooks, a little bit of added storage in the corners, and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will actually not only find a spare tire, but also there is some in-floor storage surrounding that spare tire back there. So you can probably put an ice scraper or a tire inflator kit if you prefer that, but overall, cargo area was done perfectly fine. But so then making our way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 39.6 inches. That's a ton for reference. I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Rear ventilation does come standard. Of course, there is a rear center armrest with cup holders. There's a USB-A and USB-C charging ports back there, but it gets better because there's also a 120 volt power outlet back there as well. So you could charge up your drill or your hair straightener or whatever the case. That's a rarity. You don't always find that. Typically, you don't find that in SUVs, especially of this size. So well done, Chevy, for throwing that back there. Then make our way up to the front seats. Cloth seating coming with the 2LT but you will get a perforated leather for the 3LT RS and Premier trim levels, eight-way power driver's seat for all trim levels across the board, six-way power adjustable passenger seat for the 3LT trim level and up, heated front seats, 3LT trim level and up, and then ventilated front seats are gonna be optional on the RS and Premier trim levels. Overall, seating was plenty fine. Definitely didn't have any issues finding my perfect driving position. Power lumbar support was 100% adjustable. It isn't always the case. Some of them don't adjust that much, but this one definitely adjusted a good bit. So big fan of the seat comfort in the blazer here. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping and it's going to be wrapped in urethane for the 2LT, but then it's going to be fully wrapped in a non-leather according to Chevy's website. So it's wrapped in something, probably a leatherette for the 3LT trim level and up. Heated steering wheel then coming with the RS and Premier trim levels. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your bow tie logo on the one side. When you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate then and the circular button, that's going to be the remote start which actually does come standard on all trim levels across the board so you don't usually find that that's pretty cool but it is all keyless entry with a push button start for all trim levels so all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot of the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the infotainment screen there and so once started up gauges are pretty basic for the most part you got your tachometer on the left speedometers on your right small digital display front and center you can control what is on that digital display by using the steering wheel mounting controls found on the right side of the steering wheel there gives you things like a digital speedometer there's speed limit recognition up there as well also trip a trip b how many miles you have left until you hit empty also does have the oil life meter in percentage form i love that because what you end up finding out is you don't always need to get your oil changed every three thousand miles sometimes it's four sometimes it's five depends on how you drive really so tire pressure indicator for each individual tire as well pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital portion of the gauges there but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality panoramic power sunroof is going to be optional on the 3lt trim level and up we do have that option obviously it goes way into the back so absolutely love that dual zone climate control coming standard for all trim levels across the board you will find a universal home remote for the 3lt trim level and up that's for up to three different garage doors found up on the ceiling here I guess you could say just by those garage door openers you actually do have an overhead sunglass holder so nice seeing that as well wireless phone charger is going to come standard on the RS and Premier it's going to be optional on the 3LT we got that option of course just to the right of the shifter you have dual cup holders I like that everything is surrounded by like a gloss silver finish because a lot of times manufacturers will leave that a matte gray or a matte black but they actually finished it in a nice gloss finish here so well done Chevy yet again there and within the center armrest you have a couple usb charging ports within there a 12 volt power outlet and that is where i am charging up one of my camera batteries right now as well so gotta love that but overall interior quality is actually not that bad there's a lot of soft touch material on the doors there's a lot of this gloss silver metallic finish which i like as well a little bit of chrome finish just below the infotainment screen so overall i really don't mind it i think it's finished quite nice i don't have any issues there but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen you're going to find a 10.2 inch colored touchscreen display and that'll give you bluetooth and audio streaming of course android auto apple carplay factory navigation system is going to come on the rs and premier trim levels it is going to be optional on our 3lt because we do have that navigation system with us here today also of course you can check out your radio information up there as well and so when it comes to the sound systems there's going to be six speakers coming standard for the 2lt and 3lt trim levels however there is an eight speaker bose sound system that is going to come on the rs and premier trim levels and that bose sound system is optional on the 3lt because yet again we have that option so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one all right you guys
guys, that was FM radio. Unfortunately, the Sirius XM kept saying no satellite signal attempting to connect and it never actually did connect. So uh, that was kind of disappointing. But as far as FM radio goes, I could tell there was plenty of bass. Both sound systems are traditionally incredibly reliable. I had one in my Infiniti G35 coupe back in the day, never failed me. So I don't have any issues with that. But I will say, why didn't the Sirius XM work? The other thing is, the infotainment screen is incredibly buttery smooth. When I was trying to select the station for Sirius XM, it was just flowing constantly, very smoothly through the stations. A lot of times there's a little glitch or a delay with infotainment screens, but that's not the case with this. It's a very nice infotainment system. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys up there is when you do put the blazer in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, but there is also a surround view monitor that is optional for the 3LT trim level and up. That's gonna give you that bird's eye view on the left there which is always it's going to lead us into safety and so to start front side side curtain airbags do come standard you will find a driver's knee airbag up front as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard automatic emergency braking a following distance indicator forward collision alert front pedestrian braking lane keep assist lane departure warning any teen driver feature as well which is pretty cool it actually prevents the teen driver from turning off the safety features if they were to find a way to actually turn the safety features off, it is logged in the system so you would know. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Blazer, first off, styling is absolutely amazing. One of the better looking SUVs in its class, if not the best looking SUV in its class. So that is definitely quite nice. Extremely quick as well. This is a family SUV. It shouldn't hit 60 in six seconds flat, but it does and it's amazing. So that is pretty darn cool. I love the acceleration. I loved that it wasn't turbocharged in this V6 that we have here today because that gave it instant acceleration and the better reliability, of course, in the long run as well. The other big bonus for this one is the rear seat legroom comes in at nearly 40 inches. That's a good bit of space. As far as room for improvement goes, the fuel economy isn't the best. That's kind of the trade-off when you go with a naturally aspirated V6. That's why so many manufacturers go with the turbocharged engine because it does give you a little bit of fuel economy, but the reliability isn't going to be as good. So I guess that's the trade-off. And this thing is slightly higher priced than some of the competition as well. I didn't want to mention that, but overall, I did like it. Let me know what you guys think of the Blazer in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe to the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.